In block by block, players are revolutionary factions in an unspecified modern city run by a fascist totalitarian government. You clash with police, navigate pathways among the underground network, and attempt to liberate city blocks by having an overwhelming presence of player cubes, gaining immediate bonuses and permanently making player actions easier in that neighborhood. Ultimately, each faction must be completing a separate objective at the end of a round to win the game, a tough ordeal as maintaining control can be tentative with the oppressors sending in reinforcements and swap vans that, if left undealt with, will destroy player units and even costly infrastructure. Good thing that players can reveal more objectives by sending soldiers to the council off board, accrue more units at the council than there are objective cards, and boom, another possible objective for a victory is revealed. Use your array of objectives, coordinate how you're going to collaborate, and you might just find that you obtain freedom. This is a game with a lot of simple but impactful overlapping layers that really make it come together. And while it's not really a complex game on paper, these shifting levers add a lot of nuance and tension that are underscored brilliantly by the theme. Lots of game effects from destroying police vans to cards in the enemy AI deck impact the police morale, which both represents how aggressively they populate and how far the timer moves toward full-scale military occupation and player loss, which unlike many cooperative games, you also have a handful of ways of moving backwards. And then there's Liberation, which is by far the most visceral thematic part of the game. Initially, all city blocks are set up in a semi-randomized order, impacting starting locations, routes you can move along, and ultimately the placement of places of interest for completing objectives. And in this starting oppressed state, all of the skill checks at their locations are more difficult, and their shopping centers can only be used to gain items once by permanently looting them. But if you manage to liberate a block, it flips up, and shopping centers you protected can now be useful supply depots for aid centers the players can build. But importantly, only public locations, one of several categories of locations in the game, can be liberated independently, as all other locations rely on being next to an already liberated neighborhood to become liberated themselves. This creates this beautiful image, this feeling that just one foothold can lead to cascading momentum. And while liberated blocks aren't immune from police occupation, they have lower cost to completing actions and in general are easier to fortify with overwhelming presence and setting up barricades. Speaking of action costs, players have just a few actions they can take, each costing one of their three to five dice rolled at the beginning of each of their turns. The more cubes they have on the board, the more dice they can roll, the more actions they can complete, from adding barricades that prevent most enemy movement to building new occupations which provide various advantages to fighting directly with the police. A big part of the strategy in the game is deciding where to concentrate your efforts and when to cut your losses as you'll rarely be able to do everything you want, and almost always success will rely on two or more factions working together to rally enough cubes to liberate blocks. As you play more, you learn the importance of preserving police-free zones, preferring roadblocks and the kick out two squads action over outright defeating them, especially since one move action can move any number of your cubes from one location to another so long as it's connected by uninterrupted roadways or metro tunnels without police. On the whole, Block by Block is a really solid cooperative game with a couple particularly compelling features. I adore the desperate decisions you have to make based on the ever-shifting police morale, the one-time benefits that come from the cards revealed as you liberate blocks are potent thematic hits with heavy strategic importance, and the ability to reveal more and more objectives is a great tool for overcoming that feeling that some cooperative games get where it was like doomed from the very beginning. You have a lot of options in this game, which makes it feel realistic, like you're having to pivot to adapt to different circumstances. And Uprising being the third edition of this game, not only streamlines and polishes much of the primary game mode, it introduces a semi 
cooperative variant where players can win independently, spicing up things with a hidden trader mechanism. Though, unless a game is designed with it in mind from the ground up, I'm usually just a straight cooperative kind of guy, and that holds true here too. But detached from the theme? Well, it's ultimately just that, a solid but unrevolutionary co-op game. Pun very intended. The enemy AI deck is manageable, but not particularly smooth as you plan out where police vans go and orders of operation and enemy movement. The overall strategy is pretty flexible and nuanced, but the individual actions you take don't feel too dynamic or particularly cinematic. And the player powers, while you represent these cool factions from prisoners to students, the advantages to each hardly brings a lot of personality to the table. And to cap it all off, while the game does come with a cool cloth map that goes to great lengths to try and make things much more manageable, the semi-randomized nature of a 5x5 metropolis makes setup and teardown much more meticulous than you really want. Again, it's a solid and enjoyable game, but it's the theme that really sets it apart from everything else out there. Here's the deal, there are all sorts of board games out there. Board games full of violence, exploitation, objectification, and colonial atrocities. But for the typical audience, it feels like another time, another place. For better or worse, it slips into the abstract, a realm of pretend. And while most of us don't live our day-to-day -day lives literally clashing with police in a totalitarian regime, it's clear block by block touches on something much closer to present day reality, and as such, hits differently different than most games. By bearing an aesthetic reminiscent of early aughts flash animations and near parody level tropes, the game more or less divorces itself from realism. But make no mistake, this game glorifies forceful and even violent protest as a means of liberation, which is a difficult and politically charged topic right now as people are legitimately fighting for what they think is right and revolutionary language is being co-opted by bad faith actors all over the place. Some people will see this game as leftist propaganda encouraging violence. Some will see this as escapist pre-apocalypse doomsday prepper fantasy. And hopefully most people will see this as a good game about the best ways to overcome fascism of any type by empowering individuals, encouraging differences, and working with your community. No matter how you slice it, it's the theme and the incorporation of this grassroots revolutionary language throughout that makes the game so unique. But it's also a fantastic example of how an earnest and original concept can take what is otherwise just a pretty good game and make it that much more worth playing. And that is our review. But let us know, what do you think of this game? Is this a game that you would bring home to your family? And how do you think that reaction would be? Do you have certain players in your group that you know would love this? Or do you have certain players in your group that you know would hate this? Put it all in the comments. I wanna hear about it. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for being an awesome community. You know I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald.